We are now joined by UFC middleweight Darren Stewart. Uh, Darren, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, we'll take our first question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cade Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Darren, you're coming off a big win in your last one. How did that affect the mood for this mini camp going into this latest fight? Um, affected it in a positive way because I'm coming off on a high. So there's no, there's no point of downing myself. It's so just onwards and upwards now. Does it feel a bit like deja vu to come back to fight in Vegas again so quickly? You know, it's the same hotel, same venue, etc. Yeah, but it does feel like deja vu. I might as well just slept here, to be honest. Do you do anything like ask for the same hotel room, anything else, just so, you know, it just feels more familiar for you? No, I just, just take what they give me, really, and I'm just here. <laughs> I get that. You fought some up-and-coming guys with hype before, Edmund Shabazian, Duran Wynn. How does that experience help you to take on another prospect like Kevin Holland? Uh, just another day in the office, you know, whether they're experienced or not, a fight's a fight. You just got to go in there and just do your best, you know? What does he do that makes him a dangerous opponent? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Everyone, everyone's dangerous. Everyone in the UFC is dangerous, so he's not different to no one else. I'll fight him, the next guy will be dangerous, the next guy will be dangerous, so is what it is. We're all dangerous. This is why we're in the UFC, putting a show for the fans. My final question, what do you most want to show for yourself in this latest fight? Um, I want to show what I planned out to do the last time, um, but I didn't get to it happen so quick. So I want to show that I can have it, you know, just have it, have a war and just give it my all, you know, so which I know people really know that anyway, but I'm not finished yet. There's, there's, there's a lot missing. There's a lot missing. And I'm not even talking about the wins I've had or losses I had or the knockouts, whatever. The stuff I do in training, I haven't showed the world yet. You know, people, people are jumping off their chairs because I've got a guillotine. I've been doing that since training. I've been telling people. I'm training my cousin, my coach, doing judo, grappling, Michael Russell, do you know what I mean? Claudio Silva, London Shoe Fighters bit with Titan. I've been grappling it. I've been getting it. It's just the world it's seen. So I want to show this time as well on the striking side of things that I can have it. You guys know I can have it, but there's still stuff missing that I do in training that I haven't showed the world yet. So hopefully I can do it. Thank you, Darren. Good luck. Cheers. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Uh, hello, dude. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, Darren. So early on in uh, the U.S., your first win over to a no contest. So, and then you went on a three-fight losing streak. So, what is the mindset, you know, when you're on a losing streak and you know you've lost three in a row to kind of get past that and overcome that and sort of uh, make a better showing as you have lately? I can't speak for no one else, but for me, it was a case of just don't give in a damn stop caring you know i came off you know i came back to the country as a winner and then i got overturned then i lost then i lost again and the reason i was losing because it's me making mistakes and my man wasn't there you know and i wasn't i wasn't performing perform to the best of my ability and uh it got to the point where i said i don't care no more i don't care about my because remember i came to the ufc's unbeaten so i was the guy unbeaten darren you know what i mean and then when i got like cheated and I lost three in a row. I was on the verge of giving up. And then people begged me not to give up. And I said, no, I can't do no more. And then um, I, I promised I'll carry on fighting. I mean, it got to the point where I just don't care no more, man. That as fighters, you've got to stop caring what people think. That's what we do. It's not like the fighting we do. We love fighting, but we care what people think. We're not, we're not thinking about the opponent. We're not thinking about the win or loss. We're caring about what happens after tonight. What are people going to say when we open our phones and go through social media? What are your friends going to say when they see you? Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, I lost the three fights because I put pressure on myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I lost the three fights in a row, but I did what I wanted to do, I couldn't care less. But I lost because I put weight on my shoulders. I put pressure on myself. And I started thinking about record. And, you know, I was hearing rumours, you know, like, you lose one or two, you see letting you go. So it's like, before I even got in there, I'm really putting myself down. And I'm, that's why I lost. Then it got to the point after the third loss, I said, you know what, F it. I think it was the last part of my contract as well. I said, you know what, I'm going to go in there, do what I want to do. I don't care what happens tonight. I lose, I win, I don't care what happens. And then what, that's why 
when I fought in Liverpool, I broke down crying um, because it was emotional. Like the guy I came from lost three in a row, and then I didn't care what like I didn't care no more, and I just won, and that's how I broke down crying. So my message to people out there, fighters, and I'm watching you, just go have fun, man. You know, you could win, yeah, but you could be boring. You could still like, get let go. You could lose, be entertaining. They can keep you and get bonuses. There's money to be made in this game as well at our level. There's money to be made, so why are you caring? And that's what happened. I don't want to keep dragging it on, but that's what happened to me. I care so much. Now I just don't give a damn. But speaking of pressure, you fought last month and now you're fighting uh, this month. Can you tell us the mindset and, you know, difficulty in sort of prep time and doing such a quick turnaround? Uh, right like this and I'm also curious uh, how long you've had to prepare for your opponent Kevin Holland like when you found out you'd be fighting him yeah the mindset is crazy I'm still I'm still dealing with it now and had no time to prep for Kevin Holland my style is pretty good like that because I just go in and have it with anyone so I don't need no game plan really so my st- I'm kind of gifted not many people can fight like me and do my style do you know what I mean um, but the mindset of like fighting last month to now is crazy um after this one i think i might need a little break whether decide to go out again maybe end of november and maybe early december but that gap that i had from last month to now is just there's no time like, i came back remember when i told you guys i was planning to stay out here if i stayed out here it would be all right but i had to go home because a little cut on my head they suspended me for 30 days so it didn't make sense staying here so i went back home as soon as i touched touch base in the UK, it was like, oh, all right, cool, can't be asked now. But then I had to still maintain the weight because I could get called any time. Then I got the call, I had to quarantine for like two weeks, and then they're telling you to stay ready, but you're quarantined at home for two weeks, you can't go out. So how do you stay ready? This is where I have to be mentally strong, doing my stuff at home. And then I think it was the last week of my quarantine, I got a call saying, you got to fight now in like two weeks against Kevin Holland. So now I had like basically two weeks to prep. I don't even call it prep. I don't know how it is in America now, but things ain't getting that great in the UK. So there's no, I've got no set schedule. So I literally wake up, call my cousin, call my coach. So what are we doing today? Okay, we're going here to spa. We're going here to train. We're going here to jog. I want to go on a bike ride. I want to go see my conditioning coach. I've got no time to prep. So when you think about it, the prepping time I had was two weeks. And back to your question, yeah, it's been mentally, mentally hard. I'm still dealing with it now. And the thing is that I've got to travel, which makes it even harder as well. So the process starts from me packing my bags, you know what I mean? Like the mindset starts from me packing my bag. It's crazy, it's crazy. I don't want to keep talking about it. It's crazy, but yeah, the mentality's not easy. Thanks for your time, uh, Darren. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Darren, thanks for taking the time. Uh, first question uh, with Kevin Holland. What did you think about him as an opponent? And, and have you been impressed by what you've seen out of him in the UFC? Uh, yeah, he's a fun guy, man. He's a fun fighter. That's what, that's what people like to see. Have fun. You know, he's on the same mindset I am. Just go in there, make money. Make money for your family. Put on a show. That's what we love doing. Why are you going there proper serious? That's why people can't take him. People have a lot of same People have a lot to say about him. He says this, he says that. The guy's just having fun. Why can't we not have fun? We love doing what we're doing. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, he's entertaining. I'm entertaining. And there's a reason why they put us together. Just go and have fun. Well, I think we're both on a, we both come off a win. Both got a uh, bonus. Both got similar mentality. Both entertaining. <laughs> there you go. You got it there, so... Um, let me ask one thing Kevin does in his fights is he likes to talk a lot during his fights, talk to his opponents, talk to the crowd. He'll talk to Dana. Uh, is that a weird thing? Like, is there a way to prepare for that? Cause not everyone does that. And it can throw you off when your opponent's just like randomly talking to you during a fight. I talk back. We have a conversation. It's not a problem. <laughs> How you doing? Okay. Nice right hand. No, do it again. I'll like, do it in training. I don't, I don't know about him, but I don't do it to throw you off. I'm just doing that. Like, you know what I mean? Bang. Oh, I caught you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, well, nothing wrong with it. People think it's to throw you off. It's just what he likes to do. I like doing it as well. So if you've got me in a certain position, I've got him in a certain position, yeah, and he's probably slapping me or talking. But they have one back as well. How about we both take a picture and look at Dana and have a smile? Do you know what I mean? It's not a problem. So <laughs> it is what it is, man. Like, the guy does what he has to do. I do what I have to do. Just fight, man. Just fight. 
enjoy it. It's entertaining, man. I know it gets a lot of people, but I, mean, I don't know if you guys know me in it, but I'm a bit of a joker as well. I know you just probably know me in UFC as a fighter, but outside of MMA, I'm a family man. I like to have fun, jokes, I dance, I, I make jokes, da, 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 da. So them things there ain't going to really affect me. Do you know what I mean? If anything, I'll feed off it. The reason he does that and it affects people because they're just too serious. Well, what are you so serious for? Do you know what I mean? Go have fun, like, enjoy, relax. Because it don't make sense. You're being best serious, but then at the end, you want to go shake hands and take pictures. Like where I'm from, like if you're serious, stay serious, like keep the same energy. Don't be serious. I mean, start taking pictures in the green room. And, you know what I mean? So just have fun. You know? So what you're saying is we might get our first ever mid-fight selfie is what you're saying in this fight? Maybe, maybe, man. <laughs> you know, it might be the clinch. Hey, look, head together and that. You know I mean? just, just enjoy it, man. Trust me. Like I said to the previous interview, like, just, I just don't care no more. And I know he don't care as well. He's just about getting the money up and enjoying, man. You win, you go again. I told people as well, it's not that deep. Use the time now when we're in this pandemic, man. You know I mean, no one's really fighting like we are. Normally, we fight, yeah, you get like a four or five month break. We're getting to fight regularly. You know what I mean? Like every two weeks or every four weeks, enjoy it. Go fight, relax. Bam, you win, go again. You lose, go again. Smile, go again. You're serious, go again. Just keep going because when things go back to normal, don't know when, but when they go back to normal, we ain't fighting again. I don't know how it is for the American, but in the UK, I, I'm not fighting that unless it's like every four or five months. So I'm trying to rack it in now. Do you know what I mean? So like I said, I won't do it as this close like I did this one because it's, it's, my body just... But I, I'm trying to go again maybe end of November, early December. If not, we'll go again January. And I'm I'm going to keep going while this pandemic's on, racking it in, getting the money up. But when that next wave comes and we can't travel, you got to ask yourself a question. Did you make enough money? Because I don't know about other five, but I don't work. I don't work. My family, man, this is not work. I've got two kids. I need to make money. Right now, it's not about ranking and crap like that for me, man. Win, lose, draw. It's about fighting, having fun, making my money. So. I love it. And last question, Darren. Obviously, your focus is solely on your fight, but I got to ask, there's a big main event on this card. Tyron Woodley against Colby Covington. Uh, can I get your pick or prediction how you see that one playing out? Oh, you, you're trying to make me snitch, is what we call it in the UK. You're trying to make <laughs> grass. Oh, I even do this on camera. Look, I, I want Woolley to win. Yeah. colby has got, it's a work rate. It's a work. How are you making me snitch on camera? You're a bad <laughs> man. You are a very, very bad man. But, um, yeah, Colby's guy, man. Like, he can fight. He can, if, I can't, I gotta be, like, if you want an honest opinion, like, Colby's work rate is mad. I've seen it so many times. Yeah. Work rate plays a part in MMA you can be yeah, one punch or this and that but if you can keep going and pushing your opponent and breaking your opponent which is what he does it's going to be a problem he does it on the feet he does it in the grappling he does it on the ground so I want to say to you yeah that I want I want um, Woodley to win but I think Kobe might edge it that's what you're getting from me you know? <laughs> thank you Darren we'll take our final question from Stephen Morocco with Fox Media uh, yeah, Darren, what you were talking uh, about going through between these fights sounds absolutely horrible. <laughs> um, what do you plan to do afterward to sort of get your mind right? Have a break, man. I need a break, man. Like I said, if I stayed out here, it wouldn't be a problem because I know I'll fight maybe like two weeks after. So I know I'll be out here, you will see look after me, keep the weight down, blah, blah, blah. Once you touch soil back home, it's draining. We're flying and you got to fly back here, get the weight down. It's just, it's hard work. So I think after this one, I'll like a break. Like I said, I'm not going to promise nothing. I'm, I'm looking at maybe again, end of November, beginning of December. But it's just how my body keeps up. I don't know how this fight's going to go. Doing two back-to-back -back, um, weight cuts could be a dangerous thing, what I'm doing. Who knows, but I'm doing it for a reason. Do you know what I mean? I'm doing it because I love the sport. I'm doing it to entertain the fans. I'm doing it for my family. So it is what it is. But at the same time, you've got to think about your health. Um, I don't know how Kevin's doing it, but I don't know where he cuts from. But I cut from a big weight. I went back to the UK and I was like, probably, I went back up to like 97 straight away, bang. And then, like I said, they had to tell me to stay ready. But how can I stay ready if I'm quarantining? I can't go nowhere. So we're struggling. We're struggling at home. Do you know what I mean? Like, cut a certain foods. 
missus and kids eating popcorn ice cream and you're just sitting there like grumpy that like, you can't have it because you've got to stay ready um so yeah back to your question i think um i'm gonna have a little break after this man i need it if i walk near the way it's not a problem but i don't walk nowhere near 84 don't be full right now i'm looking skinny because i'm cutting weight but i am big <laughs> so i need a break man i love my food as well so what do you walk at normally so how long are we talking though would I walk out when I'm not fighting for a long time? Sure. Oh, yeah. 100, easy. 100, easy. 100 kilos. Yeah, easy, man. That's for my legs. I've got a whole lot of weight in my legs. So, I mean, all the, all the rice and peas and jerk chicken, the hard food and Caribbean food, you know how it is, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> all right, man. Well, best of luck. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Darren. Uh, you're all set. Cheers. Thank you.